The direct delta function looks quite intimidating when we add it to an integral. It is, however, or it should be, one of our very favorite functions because it generally makes the integrals much, much easier. To begin with, we're going to look at the direct delta function with an in integral with a function f of x. In this case, we simply evaluate the integral as being f of x at 0. The entire integral equals this, nothing else. That's because when we're evalu evaluating whatever f of x is, we only care about what it is at the point where the direct delta function is. We don't care about integrating the rest of this. We don't care about that. We only care about the single value right there. If we integrate with a delta function at x minus 5, well, the delta function only has a value at when it equals 0, so that only happens when x equals 5. It means we get an integral with f of 5. The entire integral equals this. If, however, our limits are outside of where the direct delta function is, such as 7 to 9, then this becomes 0. Likewise, we can take more complicated answers. Um, for instance, let's, let's take our, our first function and apply it to something such as f of x being x squared. Simply, we get x squared where x equals 0, 0 squared equals 0. If, once again, we do what we just did with um, delta x minus 5, we get 5 squared, 25. If um, we apply this to a more complicated one, such as sine of x over x squared, with a delta function x minus 1, we get sine of 1 over 1 squared, or simply simply just sine of 1. Uh, you can calculate this on any calculator without any trouble. Down here for our final example, we take the we have a polynomial and a exponential and a delta function. So instead of worrying about integrating this, nope, we don't have to worry about integration at all unless we have a multiple, a double or a triple integral. In this case, we just have a single integral and we have a delta function, which means instead of worrying about integrating it, we simply evaluate x minus, let's see, we're only going to have an value at x equals 4. So I do 4 minus 2 cubed e to the power of 4 over 2. If I simplify this, 4 minus 2 gives me 2 cubed, gives me 8. e to the power of 4 over 2 simply becomes e to the power of 2. We can work that out in our calculators quite easily. That is the direct delta function in a nutshell. Things become a little bit more complicated if we do it with polar or spherical coordinates, but that, that's how it works. It is, and it, it is our friend, nothing to worry about.